Hello, it's Joe Simhart here again. Uh, this is a follow-up uh, to a video I just did about Twin Flames. And I had mentioned this book, um, The Chemical Wedding of uh, Christian Rosenkreutz, um, as a source for that, the idea of the ideal marriage, the ideal wedding, uh, the great king and queen in heaven, which, you know, this book uh, talks about in, in mythological terms that's been taken up by Freemasons and, and any other form of uh, new religion. But what I want to get to is uh, the Rosicrucians have a peculiar influence on a lot of occultism for the last four or five centuries. And, and um, some of that influence has manifested in a kind of anti-Semitism. And we find it in theosophy, we find it in, in lots of places, and, and how it emerged in Ariosophy, and how that influenced the fascist movements that, that continue throughout the 20th century and even today. Um, groups like the Aryan nations have roots in this kind of idea. So I want to look at the uh, Rosicrucian roots of the, the anti-Semitic trope. Um, a lot of it's based on the idea that the Jewish God of the the lost tribes or, or whatever the, the semites is a false god and he created this world and trapped the eternal light in in the material world because he's a jealous god and he wants to own uh, us in a certain way and and the goal of man is to break free of all that uh so to get back into uh you know where it all comes from um this lady here in this book called peculiar prophets by James R. Lewis, uh, Madame Blavatsky and her secret doctrine had quite a bit of influence on this, but Blavatsky was a uh, ardent student of uh, Rosicrucianism and especially the works of Sir Bulwer Lytton, uh, who wrote The Last Days of Pompeii, but he also wrote this thing called uh, uh, The Coming Race. And he, he didn't own up to it till close to his death that he had written this. Uh, it was really a uh, kind of a novel uh, about the Rosicrucian uh, teachings. And in here, uh, it says in the beginning that, and this is really key uh, in terms of occultism altogether, uh, you never quite know where anything's coming from or where it's going. You're supposed to kind of fish around, kind of like the QAnon people do, uh, constantly to to see clues and, and whatever. So, you know, here you go with uh, the uh, these teachings. It says in, in Lytton's book, The Coming Race, the exact source in capitals uh, of the arcane teachings must ever be hidden to the profane. It is up to the seeker to prove himself the origin and absoluteness of the teaching. So here you go. It's all thrown back on you. In other words, blame the victim. If you don't figure it out, it's your own damn fault. You know, we gave you all these clues. You know, it's right in front of your face, and if you can't see it, well, you must be deaf or blind or whatever. There's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with these teachings, right? All right, so that's the coming race, which is interesting in itself, considering about something about the new race. Uh, Alice Bailey picked up on this. She died in 1949, and she channeled all these works. Uh, one of them in 1934 was the externalization of the hierarchy. And there's some anti-Semitic stuff in there about the Jewish race being a one which is going out and the new race, you know, the, the new age people are coming in and, and therefore, uh, you know, any alliance with uh, ancient Jewish tradition is really kind of just going out with the times. But in the Rosicrucian Cosmo conception, which uh, this guy by the name of Max Heindel, his uh, alias, uh, it, it kind of sums up a lot of what the Theosophists and some of the early racist uh, occult literature was referring to. Um, here in Heindel's book, he has a whole chapter toward the end called The Jews, and it's called How Patriotism Has Retarded Their Progress. Now, this is written in 1909. This is well over 100 years ago. Um, and then the next part of the chapter is, and why Christ was born a Jew. So in other words, this idea of the Gnostic Christ is that he infiltrated the Jewish tradition to kind of blow it up and, and show what's really there, what's really there regarding the, uh, the true God. 
And then it says how the tribes were lost and how they will be saved. And then America is the melting pot of amalgamation and emancipation for all races, the cradle of a new people. So America has this special spiritual quality in this occult lore. Uh, by the way, this influenced the Freemasons as well. And then there's the Aryan epoch. And here we go with the Aryans. Uh, the ego begins to shine. In other words, now the true man comes forth. There's some symbolic stuff about Noah and the wine. Uh, and then it talks about the chosen people. And then the Anglo-Saxons are the fifth of Aryan races. In other words, they're the most evolved. You know, so here we go. Um, the true Christ is an Anglo-Saxon, which is something that filtered into Christian identity teaching later. And it comes out of all this stuff. But I'd like to read something from uh, the Cosmo Conception written by Max Heindel. Uh, real name is uh, Max Van Grossoff. Uh, you know, all these <laughs> spiritual teachers have fake names for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, maybe it makes them feel more special or more aligned with their true inner spirit or whatever they think is going on. So he writes, the archangels as spirits and leaders of a race are known to fight for or against the people as the exigencies of the evolution of that race demand. And Daniel in uh, in the Bible, uh, an archangel speaking to Daniel says, and now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. So here's archangels fighting for your race. The archangel Michael is the race spirit of the Jews, it says. But be careful here. This is uh, not the Jews you think they are. But Jehovah is not the God of the Jews alone. He is the author of all race religions which lead up to Christianity. Nevertheless, it is true that he didn't did take a special interest in the progenitors of the present degenerate Jews, the original Semites, the seed race for the seven races of the Aryan Epoch. So then Jehovah, of course, takes special care of a seed race in which are to be inculcated the embryonic faculties of the humanity of a new epoch. Uh, it's spiritual evolution, the new epoch. And for that reason, he was particularly concerned with the original Semites. They were his chosen people, chosen to be the seed for a new race, which was to inherit the promised land, not merely insignificant Palestine, but the entire earth, as it is at present. He did not lead them out of Egypt. That story originated with their descendants and is a confused account of their journey eastward through flood and disaster out of the doomed Atlantis into the wilderness, the desert of the Gobi, in Central Asia, there to wander during the Kabbalistic 40 years until they could enter the Promised Land. There is a double and peculiar significance to the descriptive word promise in this connection. The land was called the Promised Land because as land or earth suitable for human occupation, it did not exist at the time of the chosen people were led into the wilderness. Part of the earth had been submerged by floods and other parts changed by volcanic eruptions. Hence it was necessary that a period of time elapsed before the new earth was in a fit condition to become the possession of the Aryan race. The original Semites were set apart and forbidden to marry into other tribes or people, but they were a stiff neck and hard people being yet led almost exclusively by desire and cunning. Therefore, they disobeyed the command. Their Bible records or records that the sons of God married the daughters of man, the lower grades of their Atlantean compatriots. They thus frustrated the designs of Jehovah and were cast off. The fruit of such crossbreeding being useless as seed for the coming race. So in other words, the Jews we know today are really just mutts that uh, don't have any uh, possibility of creating the pure Aryan people that we're looking for. These crossbreeds were the progenitors of the present Jews who now speak of lost tribes. They know that some of the original number left them and went another way. And they did not know that these, those were the few who remained true. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, the Jews are not the Jews. The, the true Jews are really light-skinned people. Um, some of the myths say that they moved up to England, became the Anglo-Saxons, as this indicates in 1909. Uh, it gets crazier. Uh, if you look back at some of these teachings, you'll see, for instance, in the coming race, influenced Blavatsky and the Ariosophists. Uh, Lord Lytton writes um, in this book uh, regarding marriage and, and how children can uh, 
of, of certain marriages can adulterate a race. Except in isolated instances, interracial marriages result in offspring inferior to the more intelligent of the parents. So this is written, you know, 1850s, Civil War era, maybe a little later. Um, the genes dominant in the physical being will dominate the genes in the spiritual being. Children born of parents whose backgrounds are from two opposite climes will have physical problems common to both. The advancement of any race depends upon developing the dominant superior characteristics of that race and suppressing the inferior characteristics. Marriage between two superior beings of different races can result in a superior being, but it cannot be as superior a being as the offspring of two superior beings of the same race. Anyway, he says, see genetics as means of progression, McDaniel. So he has a reference, allegedly scientific. So you can I see where some of these white supremacist ideas are rooted in older tradition, which sound as if it comes from some golden age of knowledge. And again, you know, <laughs> there's always this warning that um, uh, the exact source of the arcane teachings must be ever hidden. So you're always looking for cue drops. You're always looking for some kind of... Uh, a clue as to where this is supposed to lead. And Blavatsky, in her secret doctrine and her Mahatma letters, was, was really great at playing this game of teasing her disciples. And, you know, you're getting there. You're almost there. Just keep going. And then, oh, no, no, you're way off. You know, as if she had some insight into what the true source of the arcane teachings was. Well, it's all cosmic BS, as I said in my last one. Uh, if you boil it down... But it makes for interesting reading, and some people can lead very colorful lives by following this sort of thing. But uh, to me, it can lead to things like the Aryan nations and to dangerous forms of racism. Uh, a lot of it is, uh, you know, back in ancient Rosicrucian lore, which influenced so much of our current culture. Um, and which reinterprets Christianity in, in, in its own way, uh, as many cults do. Uh, they hijack Christianity to conform to a particular leader's revelation. And uh, uh, there you go. The cult moves on. So I'll leave it at that. It's just some insight into the roots of anti-Semitism in Rosicrucianism and how that led to our present Aryan nation's consciousness. Thank you.